Today, we are going to be doing another tier list of Ghost of Tabor guns. It's been a very long time since we've done our first tier list. It was back when the Deagle was broken and was in S tier. So a lot has changed. A lot of new guns have come into existence that I've gotten to play with over time. We're gonna sit here, go over each gun and weapon individually, and while we go through each one individually, I have a little secret page here. The ballistics and damage numbers that every single gun is capable of. Not only are you just gonna see me place these guns, but maybe you'll learn something. We're gonna get pretty in depth here. It's gonna take us some time. I think we're gonna place things very appropriately. Is your gun on the S tier list or is it worse than you thought it was and now you're learning? Or maybe you just don't agree and, and you have special use cases of the guns. You can let us know uh, in, the, in the comments below chat. I stream on Twitch very often. The link is in the description below if you want to come join the lives. We're going to start with pistols here. Before we even think about putting a gun anywhere on this tier list, a huge thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. They are offering our community 50% off of their first box uh, when using my link in the description below as well as a free breakfast item per box for life as long as that subscription is still active I use HelloFresh very often I'm quite lazy when it comes to buying individual ingredients at a grocery store coming home prepping the exact amount and measuring things out it's a lot of extra work and I like to be efficient and HelloFresh takes all of that out of your hands. They will ship you pre-packaged, pre-measured out ingredients that are fresh, come refrigerated and shipped to your door. Impress anyone with your new skills at cooking because even if you don't have any, the recipes are so easy to follow along. Give it a shot, use my link below and cancel anytime. I want you to know that this is an overall tier list of what guns are good. So obviously, pistols are not going to place very well against a Barrett 50 cal or, or rifles uh, or high-end SMGs. But you can just kind of look at it as if you are rocking a pistol, you can pick the one that's furthest up on this tier list. So the 1911, uh, before we even put it anywhere, what we're gonna do, is find the 1911 on this ballistic and just take a look at the damage numbers. So it's shooting 45 ACP, which is a much larger round uh, for pistols. So we actually have pretty decent damage numbers uh, in comparison to some other guns here. I'd say it's, it's slightly above middle ground for pistols itself. Uh, it's pulling 41.8 damage on FMJ and a whopping 48.3 damage uh, if you put AP. Who's putting AP ammo in your pistols? I mean, look, if, you, if you're doing it, you might as well. If you got AP powder, uh, it can squeeze a little extra damage out. Uh, mag capacity, not uh, it's, it's pretty standard for a pistol. So, you know, I don't know. Out, out of pistols, it, it's... It's one I would rather use over most of the others, okay? Um, let's, let's, let's throw it in C for now. Now, these things might change over time. Mm, maybe it belongs in D. I'm gonna leave it in C for now. Uh, we've got a Glock up next. Uh, Glock's great gun, great mag capacity, super clear iron sights, like incredibly clear iron sights. So you can even take long distance shots pretty well. Um, if you're decent at aiming a pistol, uh, let's take a look at the bullet damage though. So the Glock in comparison, uh, is shooting nine by 19, smaller caliber round. Uh, and we can see the difference in damage here from the, uh, 45 ACP. We've got 41.8 there, but the Glock's only pulling 35. So, uh, you know, if, if ghosts have, uh, you know, a hundred health, which they have a hundred health, right chat? I'm near positive. Ghosts have a hundred health. Um, you're gonna have to shoot somebody unarmored at least three times in the chest to kill them. We're talking like center mass shots. Um, there's some weird multipliers that happen if you shoot outer limbs. Uh, you're actually doing less damage there, so... 
most of the time people are going to be having a chest rig. You're not going to be doing much unless you're pulling headshots here. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's still a great pistol, uh, but, you know, damage is a little bit weak there. Uh, still, I'd probably pick it a similar amount of times next to the 1911. Um, they're great. They're, it's a great pistol. So next we have the Deagle, which I don't use often anymore after the nerf, but it's still doing good damage. I don't know, dude, when have these damage numbers been updated? It says 2023 in December. Oh boy. Chat, when did the Deagle get nerfed? I don't know, I hope I'm, I'm hoping these damage numbers are still right because they, they look super high still. <laughs> they look super high. The Deagle is boasting 87 damage still, uh, according to the wiki page, on FMJ rounds and boasts 114.5 damage with AP rounds. Anything over a hundred damage is literally a one-shot kill, center mass. You guys know that, right? You guys know that, right? So, if this data is correct, the Deagle still might be S tier. I thought it got nerfed into the ground. Is it still this strong? Throw some AP ammo into a Desert Eagle and, and one-shot people in the chest. Like... That seems crazy. Now, certain armor is going to put a dent in this, uh, more higher end armor, but still, man, that's some insane damage that's still getting through, even if it does take a couple of shots. I'm very surprised to see this. I'm very surprised to see this damage number. Um, but if we're going off wiki damage numbers, I don't know. A one-shot pistol that's not terribly expensive? I feel like that's like S tier chat we might move this but god i feel like that's s tier that's insane all right let's move on golden tt the golden tt in comparison to the normal takarov uh does it have any differences 35.9 damage 35.9 damage so it's exactly the same it's just got gold on it um, so that inherently makes it a better gun, even though it does the exact same amount of damage. Uh, 35.9 damage per shot on FMJ, and only getting 1.1 extra damage out of it by putting AP rounds in it. For 7.62 by 25, <laughs> it's rough. I mean, pick it up and use it if it's the only thing you got. Um, and this goes for the same for the regular TT, not just the golden one. Uh, if you've got nothing, it's a gun that might save your life. But honestly, I'd pick up anything else over it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in F tier. I think it's, the iron sights are garbage too. Uh, where's the other TT? We'll put them right next to each other. Uh, it looks like we have the USP next, chat. Let's look at those damage numbers. I'm excited for this, this one. Uh, what do we got here, chat? Put the 5.7 in S tier, it's the only gun I love, lol. Rex Fox, that is a fire gun for sure. We'll see where it falls, all right? Um, so we have the HK USB 45, another 45 caliber um, pistol. It's funny, if we look at the damage numbers uh, for our 1911, um, we can see that there's not much difference. It's it's like one extra damage. Uh, the AP does about one extra damage as well. So it's pretty similar. The gun looks sweet as hell, so it gets a few extra style points. Um, but you know, it, it's a good 45 caliber pistol if you're forced to use one. Now, would I take it over a rifle or an SMG? In my case, no, definitely wouldn't. We'll throw it in C tier. Makarov, we all know how it is. I'm throwing it in F tier, but for the sake of uh, consistency, let's look at the Makarov's damage numbers, chat. Um, 31, 32 with AP, shooting nine by 18. And as you can see, there's only one gun that we'll get to that is shooting worse than the Makarov, if you can believe it. Uh, it's pretty garbage, chat. It's pretty garbage. 
So if you find a Makarov, put it in your bag. It's worth XP. That's really all I can say about that gun. There's there's not much else to say. Next is the JW 2011, another 45 ACP pistol. Um, and I like the pistols that are shooting the larger rounds. You get an extra, a little bit extra armor penetration value and just a little bit extra base damage if you are forced to use a pistol. Another one boasting about 45. You know what, I'm gonna sort this chat. The second most damaging gun was the USP we went over. The 1911 being in third. And then the one we're on now, the JW 2011. Very, very similar. Hardly any different than the second most damaging pistol uh, in the game according to the wiki. So it's good. It's 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 just a really flashy, pretty gun. Uh, bring it in for style points because uh, you look badass if you've got it. But other than that, it's it's really going to perform very similarly to the 1911. Yeah, you got a rail on the bottom. Cool. You can throw whatever you want there, but it's pretty much the same thing here. Um, all right, chat. Up next is going to be the JW G34, uh, a 9x19 uh, pistol. Also another one with max style points. Uh, pretty good. Chat's pointing out that you can put Glock drum mags. Any of these guns that you see that are 1911, or sorry, 9x19, yes, you can throw that vector drum mag in there uh, and use any of these pistols like that. So you can pull the trigger really fast, but honestly, if you're putting a drum mag in a pistol and being like, yeah, it's way better now, uh, just put the drum mag in the vector and use an SMG build that is designed to shoot the bullets fully auto in a better fashion with top rail sights. Like, just use it in the vector then. Um, putting in the pistol, it's just style points. Like, you're really not getting much out of it extra, chat. So, you know, just throw those drum mags into your vector and save it for that. Um, what, what, what's next? I'm getting derailed here. Uh, what's this gun? It's the, uh, is it the JW G34? No, it's not. What is it? Is it the 5.7? I think it's the old 5.7 model. This is the old 5.7 model. Okay, so next up is the 5.7, shooting 5.7 by 28 rounds. Um, 5.7s, uh, if I'm right in remembering this, are known for their better armor uh, penetration rounds. Um, they're boasting about 34 damage, which is pretty on par with... Uh, <sighs> It's like a 10, 20% drop uh, in damage from our 45 ACP rounds. But I've got a soft spot for the, um, uh, for the 5.7. It's, it's, it's a good gun for sure, but it's still another one of those pistols that, it's, it's just a pistol. I, I don't know what else to say about it. Like, you can get a little bit more armor pen value out of it, but you're still shooting a pistol at the end of the day. I probably put it, hmm, put it here. Best Fenix head tapper. Yeah, so like if you can tap headshots with all these pistols and they don't have a decent helmet, um, you'll definitely one shot everybody. Remember that even though I'm going over these damage numbers that a headshot regardless of what gun it is, is always a one-shot kill. So if you're good at aiming and you can pull off those headshots and are very accurate, um, a pistol in the hands of someone who's well-trained is very deadly. So just keep keep that in mind, chat. But if we're talking about taking center mass shots, there's better choices for sure. Uh, okay, next is the JW G34, another nine by 19. It's doing about the same exact damage as the Glock. And I think this is just another one of those really nice, beautiful looking guns. It's performing literally identical to the Glock uh, as far as damage output goes. So it belongs next to the Glock. What can I say? Uh, I think that's it for pistols. I wanted to get those out of the way. Oh no, we have this one. We've got the 22, the Ruger MK3. Uh, chat, look at how abysmal these damage numbers are. If you're ever running out there with a 22 in your hip and nothing else, if you're not pulling headshots, you're losing, okay? Even if there's a naked guy in front of you, 
you'd have to shoot him seven times center mass, if my math is right, just to kill him with no armor, a naked dude. You'd have to shoot seven times in the chest because of how the damage is on these tiny rounds. Now, remember what I said before though, if you can hit one of those shots to the head, yes, it's an instant headshot. Yeah, okay, but <laughs> just, just know if you're forced to use this gun, if you're not headshotting, don't even bother, all right? Don't even bother. Your words, you screaming at them will do more damage than this Ruger will in <laughs> center mass, all right? So, yeah, if you want to be like an elitist and do like a headshot only challenge, uh, go ahead and bring this in. But if anybody has any sort of helmet, you're doing no damage. I mean, unless you shoot them in the chin, it just makes it a little harder. You can get them right here where they're not covered. That'll do it. Uh, all right, chat, on to SMGs. We have the uh, the God tier Agram. Uh, let's take a look at this Agram. It's a 30 round mag. Okay, it's bigger than I thought. Uh, definitely bigger than I thought. But god damn, it shoots so fast, it goes through that mag and kicks like a monster. There's no there's no rails on this thing anywhere, so you're not gonna be able to put any attachments on it. Honestly, I personally hate this gun. Whenever I see it, I'm just like, God no, I'm never using this. Um but you know, it's better than the pistols, I suppose. Like, it's definitely better than a pistol. It's gonna be putting out more DPS downrange faster. Doing 31.9 damage uh, with FMJ. Uh, I don't know. Dude, the kick on it is insane. If you've ever taken this gun and just held down the trigger, the gun just goes straight up in the air, especially if you're one-handing it too. Yeah, what do you guys think about this gun? I want to know your opinion as well. Where would you put this? I almost want to put it in D category. I think it's better than these pistols, but worse than these good pistols. Because it's just so inaccurate. I might have to move this around, chat. Maybe these all go in C tier. Let's adjust these. I'm gonna move these here. These are all getting dropped to D tier. Uh, next up is the Ump, a 45 ACB, ACP SMG. You guys already know because we just talked about it. The 45 ACP pistols boast some of the higher damage numbers on the pistol list. So we should see something similar to that. Um, uh, here in the SMGs. So let's go ahead and find our ump, and we can see that it's actually the second highest damaging uh, SMG here as far as per round. Now, if you take in consideration the RPM, uh, which is rounds per minute that can fire, it's on the lower end of SMGs, but that also gives some benefits as well. It means with a slower rate of fire that the kick, especially with a foregrip put on here, um, is a lot more manageable, the recoil. So you can actually fully auto umps with a lot of control, a lot of accuracy, which makes this gun very, very good and underrated. Uh, I really think the ump is a fantastic gun. It's a gun that I should use more often. Um, and there's a reason that they made a boss gun out of the ump. It is very strong. It, de it deserves a lot more attention. I think it's super underrated. It can be kitted and handle itself fantastically. Uh, you can even get over the 50 damage mark per shot if you throw AP rounds in there. And now keep in chat, keep in mind chat, if you're doing over 50 damage per round, that means it only takes two rounds if they're doing that much damage to kill a player. Um, that's a big deal. That's a big deal being in the over 50 damage category. Um, and I'll talk about this more when we do the Thompson, but there's a reason I really love and put aside Thompson's with drum mags. Because it's one that's right up there with breaking the 50 damage mark. It can absolutely shred people very quickly, especially in close quarter combats. Um, I think it's a really, really good gun. Um, I'm thinking about putting it in A or B right now. Um, I'll leave it in... I'll leave it in high B for now. It might bump up to an A later. Uh, this is a gun that doesn't exist in the game anymore. Um, I think it just had some bugs or some weird shit. So we're just gonna ignore that one and move on to the P90. Uh, so what do we got here? 
P90, uh, really fast high rate of fire, boasts a 50 round mag, very nice there. Uh, and it's doing decent damage. We're doing 39.7 damage per shot or a whopping 44.2 if you throw some AP rounds in there. Uh, the rate of fire really makes up for uh, the d lower damage on this gun. So take that into consideration. The P90 is a little awkward to learn to aim because the 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 grip points of the gun of your forehand and your backhand are very close together. So it'll take a little bit of time to get used to this. But if you can get the P90 down and aim it well, um, it is a very great and fantastic gun in close quarter combat. If you're looking to rock a gun in missile silo that can do well, that doesn't get rocked often, and has great mag capacity right out the gate, <clears throat> the P90 is a no-brainer. Very, very good gun. I think it belongs in B as well. <clears throat> All right, chat, we have the tan. Chat, what do you guys think so far, huh? How, how how angry have I made some of you uh, on some of the placement of these guns? Are you like, oh my god, there's no way he put my favorite gun in F tier? Uh, tell me, chat. I'm listening to you. We're going to take a break every so often and just, and just yap, and then we'll get back to it. F you, Tan, says Jinxed. All right, Jinxed is mad. Darks likes it. Um should be an A. Yeah, no, I, I really went back and forth of putting it in an A category or not. And it might bump up there later. It really depends on what else is in A tier um, as we go. The ump is very underrated. <laughs> you want the Ruger in S tier? Yeah. Agram should be C. Not a bad choice. Yeah, it's a very high D. So chat, the further left on the tier, like you can, you can separate these tiers um, into own tiers of themselves. So the deer, the D tier, everything furthest on the left is going to be better in the D tier, and the things furthest to right are going to be the worst, in my opinion. Um, so, so keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. <clears throat> so Agram being super high D, it could get pushed up to C depending on what else we get in there. Um, but let's keep going, chat. <clears throat> we have the Tan, the Chris Vector 10 millimeter uh, version. Uh, really fast fire rate. We're breaking a thousand rounds, uh, which is really nice to see on SMGs. That puts it in the higher and faster category of getting rounds down range. Uh, 41.1 damage on FMJ and 42 damage. Not a very big upgrade uh, with AP rounds. You are still getting more penetration value through higher end armor with AP rounds, um, but we're just not seeing too much of a damage boost from it. Um, but the Chris Vector, especially the 10 millimeter version, uh, it's a fantastic gun. It's another one of those really fun close quarter combat guns that I bring into Missile Silo uh, if ever I, I get my hands on it and just have a blast mowing through people, especially if you get those um, drum mags. I honestly... I can't recommend using the gun too much without the drum mags. Um, at least have one drum mag as your primary to really feel this gun shine and abuse the high fire rate without killing yourself because you miss and ran out of uh, ammo right away. Uh, and just have some backup standard mags if you need them. Uh, definitely rock the drum mag. It really makes this gun shine. Uh, you have attachments uh, available. You can put a foregrip on this, unlike the P90, uh, and a nice top sight. Uh, I think the gun kits out well, suppress it, and uh, the gun is fantastic fully kitted. I really like it. I think it goes right in with these other rifles. If not... <sighs> I, think it, I think I like it better than the P90, if, if I'm being honest. Um, next we got the CX, chat. Oh boy, I don't even know if I want to rant about this gun. Chat, I don't- I hate the CX. What can I say? Like, on paper, it's not terribly garbage, but I fucking- I don't like it very much. Let me look at the mag capacity. It's a 32 round capacity- mag round capacity, which isn't terrible, but how many of you guys, especially since it's shooting a thousand rounds per minute, how many of you guys think that there's only like 15 rounds in this mag because of how quickly the mag gets deleted? 
I I don't know. I don't I don't like this gun very much. Uh, it does decent damage. It's pretty middle middle ground on damage. Maybe slightly lower than middle ground on damage. But chat, do you guys like this gun? I mean, definitely can get rounds out, and if you shoot people in the kneecaps with 9x19, because God knows you're not going to be doing much damage at all to any mid-gear armored guys if you're shooting them in their armored chest plates. Um, I guess if you're shooting them in the knees, you know, you can you can delete anybody pretty instantly. Um, or if you're good at pulling that headshot off off the uh, recoil, then it's it's a great gun. But I just think there's better options, in my opinion. I definitely will use the gun if I'm going in naked and have nothing else. Um, but I I personally am not going out of my way to rock the CX-8. Um, I see a, a lot of mixed people in chat both either saying it's a shit gun or that it's like really, really good. So, um, YouTube, tell me what you think about the CX because people seem pretty, pretty split on this. I don't like the gun very much, chat. I think it's nowhere as bad as the Agram, but it's nowhere as good as, as the ump and the vector in my eyes. So I'm going to throw it into our first C tier. Um, okay, we have the MP9 next. Uh, where's my MP9? Right here, the MP9. Shoots 9 by 19 rounds. Uh, 37 damage. Uh, it's a little bit on the higher end of damage. Still pretty mid-grade for the SMGs. Uh, in comparison, it's doing 2 less damage than the P90. Uh, and a whopping 5? Five less damage? Four? Math is hard. Um, four less damage than the vector. Um, not that big of a difference. Rate of fire is still really close to that thousand mark, which is what we want to see. Um, but once again, with 9 by 19 rounds, even with AP in it, you're really not piercing much armor if they're mid-grade armored or higher. You're going to want to be going for those headshots um, or pulling off insane kneecap shots and exploding kitted kneecaps. Uh, they will die very quickly if you can shoot them unarmored. Do not get me wrong. But you need to be knowledgeable and mindful of this if you're bringing this gun in. Okay? Now, of course, nakeds, you're going to shred no problem, but you really need to adapt and think about where you're shooting people if you're ever shooting 9x19, especially in an SMG or a pistol. So, uh, it's it's a decent gun. Uh, I, I think... God, I almost think it goes in C tier, chat. You guys might think I'm crazy for that. You guys might think I'm crazy than that. I'm putting it in high C for now. All right, we've got the nine mil vector chat. Um, now the nine mil vector is surprisingly in the second to worst SMG in regards to just raw damage output. It is breaking that thousand R. Uh, rounds per minute as far as fire rate goes but we can see these pretty abysmally small damage numbers now yes it is shooting the rounds fast so you will still kill kill people quickly but you're shooting those 9 by 19 rounds i talked about earlier so you're gonna want to be kneecap sh shooting or headshot shooting if you're shooting anyone in the chest same deal as what i explained before it's gonna be rough um, and, and you'll probably die uh, if your other if the person you're fighting is landing their shots So keep that in mind. I know the vector is held in very high standards But there is a massive difference in and in, in capability between the 9 by 19 version of the vector and the 10 mil version of the vector So um, that might surprise some of you guys, but keep that in mind um, I think this even goes in because you can put drum mags in it, I, I put it a little higher because um, it has that capabilities, but I'll still put it into C category. Uh, PPSH chat. Team was doing good chat. Yeah, even with AP. Um, AP rounds on the 9 mil vector. You're, you're, you're barely piercing through like level 2 armor. All right, PPSH rocking 7.62 by 25 millimeter. 
all right? Doing 38.8 damage per round, 40.1. If you're rocking AP, uh, we have that over 1,000 RPM, great. And this thing shreds. The rounds have just a bit better armor penetration value. Um, can I even pull that up? Where's the ballistics part? 762 by what, chat? By 25? Is that what it was? As we go up of tiers of armor, what is the percent chance that the bullet actually penetrates and deals damage? Uh, six being the highest, zero being the worst. So um, at six, it's almost a guaranteed chance. Uh, at five, we're getting to 85 to 95% chance. Bunch of nerdy math numbers to say that um, the 762, so it's got a really good chance of piercing tier one armor. It's got a decent chance of piercing tier two. And then we start seeing a big fall off on tier three armor, tier four, and then we're not piercing at all tier five or tier six. Um, but for an SMG, it's got pretty good base values for piercing through mid-grade armor at a decent chance. And we can compare this, even if we look at 10 millimeter rounds, chat, if we're firing 10 millimeter rounds after the, out of the 10 mil vector, um, we see an instant drop off. We only have a one rating on piercing tier three armor and a one rating means it's only a five to 24% chance that we even get damage out of the bullet. Now this is a lot of, uh, I think a lot of people overlook these penetration values and get confused at, oh my God, I shot him like 20 times in the chest. Yeah, you probably did, but you got to take in consideration the round that you're shooting and the likelihood it's going to pierce whatever armor you're up against. So if we take a look at standard 9 by 18 rounds, full metal jacket, you have the same drop off. Once you get a mid-grade chest armor, something that's rank 3, your chances of piercing it, even with like AP rounds, it goes up a decent amount, but with full metal jacket rounds, you're pretty much not getting through. You're you, it, there's a 3 in 4 chance, if not higher, that your bullet literally does no damage. So keep this in mind, okay? Because because if, if we look at what can actually penetrate high-end armor, we're gonna be looking at those massive rounds. The 338, the, the 50 BMG, this is gonna be your Barrett 50 cal. Um, your 762 by 54 rounds, which are going to be like, um, what, your G3, your M1 SAS. These things are going to have those values that can actually pierce through high-end armor with a much higher likelihood. Now, we're just going to scroll up, chat, and keep in mind how much this armor is protecting you against most rounds if you're rocking tier 6 armor. Even tier 5 armor, we don't see much of a difference there. We're seeing zeros across the board on the majority of rounds with tier six armor. So while you're heavy as shit rocking that tier six armor, if a bullet impacts the, the mesh of the armor itself, you're getting a lot of protection on it. And that's why I tell you, shoot kneecaps, okay? If you see someone heavily kitted, you will kill them a lot faster than shooting them center mast um, across most guns. All right, enough ranting about ballistics, okay? But I wanted to make that clear, chat, because it's not just the gun, but it's the caliber of round and the pierce through it has. Uh, long story short, we're looking at the PPSH. It's got decent penetration in comparison to most of the SMGs. And my God, it's a monster. I love the PPSH. I can take it in. I can destroy kitted players with it very easily. Um, yes, you can't put sights on the top. Yes, you can't put a foregrip. But the drum mag capacity is fantastic right out the gate. And you're just shredding players. Um, God, for close quarter combat, I don't know. I put it in B tier. I'll put it right below the uh, the ump. I think it's great. I think it's great. Moving on, chat. Uh, we've got the... Where is it? Where's this damn weird-ass rifle-looking-ass SMG? The JW MPX. Uh, another decent SMG. It's rocking those 9x19 rounds we're talking about. 
Uh, so it's missing a lot of penetration values, but it's going to be doing great flesh damage. Uh, it's doing almost identical damage to the CX, the Storm. Um, it's got a slower rate of fire for a 9x19 round. So that comes with its pros and cons. It's doing less damage over time for damage per second, but it's a lot more stable, meaning you can control the recoil and maybe use it at longer distances a bit more. Um, I don't use it very often, to be honest. It's 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 just another nine by nineteen SMG that can can kind of be just like a Walmart rifle. You can't afford a rifle, can't afford anything else, want a fully auto rifle, you can bring this thing in, but I don't know. It's it's really it really doesn't do much for me, chat. It doesn't do much for me. I'll put it in I'll put it in C tier here. You guys want a link to the ammo chart? I'll link it to you. It's the ballistic section. It's on this page, you can scroll down and find it. Um and and keep in mind the uh where's it at? It's got a 41 round mag, which is kind of what throws the uh, the JW MPX a little bit higher since you have a 41 round right out the gate. Um, so the mag definitely does feel like it goes the distance in comparison because it's got the slow fire rate and larger capacity. It's not bad. We'll put it in high C. I see. All right, chat. I see. Uh, next, we move up to the Thompson. Uh, so now the Thompson is the, the third highest damaging uh, SMG on this rifle. Yes, it's got a slower rate of fire to kind of balance it out there, but we're rocking those 45 ACP rounds, which the larger rounds should imply much more uh, armor penetration value. We can double check that down below, but it's doing 53.5 damage with AP rounds, uh, which puts it in the two shot category. It's a big deal. So to 45 ACP, uh, we can move down here. And I can show you that 45 ACP. It's got. It's pretty much the same as 9 by 18. If we're if we're looking at armor penetration values, which surprises me. That's a lot lower. They're actually identical to 9 by 18, uh, and 9 by 19 being mm, about the same as well. So maybe it's not as good as I thought, knowing those values. Uh, the damage numbers are nice for the flesh damage, so I feel like it kind of makes up for it. Uh, but you're going to want to be shooting kneecaps, okay? Uh, if, if anyone's slightly armored, so keep that in mind. I'll put the... I think Thompson goes high C. High C. Uh, okay, we've got the bison next. How, how do you think the bison's going to play? No, this isn't a bison. What is this? Saiga. Uh, that needs to go in shotguns. All right, we'll move that along. The MP7 chat. This is kind of a fan favorite gun. Um, now, where is it going to be placed after we look at all the damage numbers? Where do you guys think the MP7 is going to go? People love this gun. Yeah, the iron sights are horrible for the, uh, the Thompson. Don't get me wrong. You're usually point firing this gun to do any decent damage on it. Uh, same with the PPSH. You need to learn to point fire that thing to, to make it at all useful. Uh, the MP7, pretty high up on the list as far as damage goes. And it breaks the 1K mark, so it's keeping up with uh, rounds per minute. Um, it shoots 4 by 6 by 30 uh, 4 point6 by 30 it's doing 42.3 damage per shot and 42.3 damage, so not much extra flesh damage uh, with AP rounds, but you will get the higher penetration values. Now, let's take a quick look at this round type and see how it's breaking through ammo uh, armor. So it's doing great against tier one um with fmj rounds it's doing pretty good against tier three and it's piercing through some tier three and barely piercing through t4 which is on the higher end of smgs as far as the capabilities of piercing through armor um <clears throat> even with FMJ rounds and not rocking AP. AP, you can start getting into the capabilities of piercing tier five and tier six, but keep in mind again, this is that like four to 24% chance to pierce. It's not much, you're really on the low end. Um, you're probably not getting through much. 
Uh, so once again, go for those kneecaps uh, if you are fighting higher end armored units. But for an SMG, it's better than all the rest. You get access to the insane... How, how big are the drum mags, chat? The drum mags are fucking ridiculous for this gun. It's got a 75 round drum mag and the base mag is 40 rounds. I think it's a great fucking gun. All those things being said, might even go into A tier. It might even be a low A tier gun. It's quite good, chat. I think I'm gonna put it in A tier for now. What do you guys think? Next we have absolute dog water. The Mat 49, shooting nine by 19. So we're all familiar with the penetration values we get out of nine by 19 because we were looking at that chart before. Uh, it's doing mid to low grade damage per round with combine that with one of the slower fire rates we're going to see on this list for SMGs, okay? So dropping the damage per second even lower with rounds that don't penetrate, I think we know where this is going. Uh, this is one of those, it's slightly better than the Agram in my opinion. God, it might not even be, it might be worse than the Agram. They're pretty identical. Uh, moving on, MP5 chat. MP5, what do we think here? Another nine by 19, we're familiar with the damage penetration numbers on those, we've seen it. It's doing decent, I, it's, it's doing mid-tier damage uh, for our SMGs here. Fire rate is on the lower side as well. Um, we're not terribly close to that thousand rounds per minute, so that'll affect our damage as well. Can't put top rails uh, for optics on this thing, which I think the MP5 would benefit a ton with optics on the front. The iron sights are pretty rough. The mag size is pretty rough. Um, it's 30 rounds, but... I, I don't know, man. I guess the mag size isn't rough, but it just feels like it doesn't have enough going for it to be like, man, I'm gonna rock the MP5 uh, on all of these missile silo runs because it's such a great gun. Like, I just can't see myself ever saying that. I think it goes, I think I put it low C and fuck it, boys. I'm moving the CX to high D, all right? The CX is getting dumped down. Next, we have the MP40. Yes, a modular MP5 is coming that we can actually kit, so that will change uh, the MP5 a little bit once we can once we can kit it up. But uh, next up, we have the MP40. It's a nine by nineteen SMG as well, with probably the slowest fire rate that we're going to see out of an SMG. But this comes with its benefits, surprisingly. Um, because of the low rate of fire, you can actually fully auto this gun and shoot people at decent range, uh, and keep it steady. So, hmm, hmm, thank you, D Hollywood. So, I don't know, the damage numbers are on par with the MP5. People kind of have this as a favorite gun because it's it's a very it's like one of the first SMGs you can get access to that really will shred through missile silo um, as far as the Phoenixes go um, so that you can get that SMG kill quest done from Spectre. It gets used a lot so I think it gets held to a higher standard because of that but if we're just looking at numbers, damage output capabilities, um, mag size, attachment capabilities, it is on the shittier end of SMGs. It really is. Like, if anything, if, if you like the, how accurate it is, just have more trigger, trigger discipline on the faster fire rates and it'll perform just, time, just fine. I'm putting this high D tier, okay? I think it's better than the CX. I think it's better than the Agram because it's more controllable. But it's still, it's a, it's a shit gun, chat. It, it, it really is. I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, next, we have the MAC-10. Now, the MAC-10 is going to be boasting mid-grade damage, insane fire rate, okay? This is one of the few SMGs that we're going to see largely over a 1,000 rounds per minute. So this thing can pump out 
bullets at an incredibly high fire rate. Remember you're not rocking 9x19. You remember the penetration values that we talked about before for this. So you're definitely not getting through armor much. But if you can shoot people in the fucking knees, they will drop faster. You will be so surprised at how fast you can drop kitted players if you're close enough and get a decent amount of rounds in their kneecap. You will be incredibly surprised. Um, and because of the high rate of fire, the damage goes through the roof, but the controllability of the gun goes down drastically. Now, you can take some time and practice pulling that front end down as you fire it to become much more accurate with this gun, but it's much a much harder skill to develop. But if you develop it, you can be an absolute monster with a MAC-10 in my opinion. It is insane. Now you do need to deal with the MAC-10's mag capacity with that fast fire rate. You might say, oh, it's got a mid-ground 32 round mag, great. You're gonna blow through that in a quarter of a second or less, okay? The mag is gonna be dumped quickly. So make sure that you have your target in sight, you're controlling the recoil, or you're not gonna shoot the blind side of a barn, okay? The red side of a barn, whatever the fuck that saying is, um, to save your life before your gun starts clicking and, and, you're, and you're out. <laughs> so keep that in mind, but I honestly believe the gun has insane potential you can't put optics on it you're going to rely on recoil controlling the recoil i don't know i think it's got crazy potential it's got insane damage numbers if you can just hit flesh um i'm putting this high b that might surprise you low b low b next up is the mac 11 this is a brand new gun as of this wipe um and luckily chats I got the opportunity of spending a lot of time with it um, recently after stealing it. And we went through and destroyed missile silo lobbies with it back to back. Um, I'm very surprised. Now the Mac 11 here is going to be boasting the lowest damage value out of any of the um, uh, out of any of the SMGs at 28, 29.5 for AP, but it's also pulling that 1500 RPM, the highest that we'll see uh, on this list here. Um, now, the it's shooting 380 rounds instead, and let's take a look at the armor penetration values, if they even have it. They might not have it on the list yet. So let's take this. Um, I don't, I don't think they're gonna have it listed, to be honest. So all you nerds out there are gonna have to sit down and figure out the armor penetration values of the 380 and see how it, um, how it mocks up against others, but. I had pretty a pretty good experience with it. Chat, what do you think? How many of you are like uh, ex-military or gun nuts or current military that are familiar with penetration values of that round type? Does anyone know? IRL penetration in game is very different. Damn, it is. I was hoping it was pretty on par. 380 pen, not good. 380 is comparable. No, <laughs> it's comparable to 22 LR. Okay, so it's horrible. It's horrible. Worse by 9 by 18. It's probably close to that. Look, a lot of the people who are making Ghost of Tabor are ex-military, um, and, and they like making things as realistic as they can and balanced as they can, so we should expect things to behave pretty similarly there. Of course, that's not the case across the board, but, you know, we can only hope. Um, I think this gun goes alongside... Alongside the Mac 10. It's just so fun to use. It's really, really fun to use. And I don't know if they've put it in this uh, this list yet, but if we can find the Mac 11 here. Yeah, they don't have it on this list yet. Chat, what's the mag capacity? Is it 45 rounds base for the, um, uh, for the Mac 11? The larger mag capacity is what, what gives it away for me, too. You lose a little bit of damage and penetration, but like I said, did you guys see what happened when I put this Mac 11 into Kurtex kneecap and pulled the trigger? He literally dropped within, like, less than quarter of a second. 
maybe like 0.3 seconds he was dead when I held the trigger down. It's 50? I don't know, chat. I kind of like it. It's kind of a meme gun, but at the same time, in the right hands who understand that it's not penetrating any armor, bruh, you can still shred people and delete them. You guys see how fast I killed Kurtek with it? It was insane. What up, Always Gaming? Good to have you. We're going on to the, uh, what's it called? The Thread Ripper, Flesh Ripper, um, Thread Terror. I don't know, it's something like that. Uh, we've got our little ump here, chat. It is the Finn Reaper. Finn Ripper? I've heard say, dude, the different names I've heard this gun called, it just continues to grow. Did, didn't, didn't Scott say Finn Ripper? Or did he say Reaper? I thought it was Ripper. But on the wiki it says Reaper, so <laughs> I don't, I don't know, chat. I don't know. Um, but this is the highest damaging gun, um, out of all of our SMGs. Uh, yes, it has a lower fire rate, so the deep damage per second balances out a little bit over time. We're walking 45 ACP, um, which is very similar to 9x18, 9x19 for penetration values according to the charts. Um, but it's, it's basically the same, except they've boosted the damage um, across the board. Now, recoil is going to behave differently too because of the built-in foregrip, so you will probably see a lot better recoil um in comparison to an ump with an angled foregrip the best foregrip in the in the game so it might behave uh much better as far as uh recoil goes as well so you get a nice damage boost uh for the boss version the cultist is going to drop this on nighttime island very low chance i would probably say it's about a one in ten chance per nighttime raid for the boss to even be there um but they come with these cool double stacked mags as well um that what's the capacity of those chat d d d d they're 45 round mags um is that different what is the regular one? Is it only like 25? The regular ump? It is 25 base. So the extended 45 uh, double stacked mags that come with the boss version of the ump uh, are pretty great. Also style points, you get a little fucking dangly charm on it with Infish's, um, you know, little little face there. Uh, it's a great gun. It's, it's even better than the ump and we've already placed the ump as the second highest on this list. Um, so naturally it's got to go slightly above that. I think we're going to put it in the high B, possibly A tier. Um, it could, it could be low A chat. It's sitting right in between these. Uh, are you guys ready for, uh, the looty? Everybody's been waiting to see what I'm going to say about the looty, right? It's, it's the meme gun of Tabor. Either people are diehard fans of it, or they just can't stop talking about how shit the gun is. Another one of those rare SMGs that are boosting 1200 RPM, a good amount over a thousand, shooting nine by 19. Uh, okay damage, pretty mid tier here. It's on the lower end of the SMG, but it shoots fast. Uh, but doesn't it have like a 12 round mag capacity? Isn't it something absolute dog shit chat? What is it? Yeah, where's the looty? Am I blind? It's a 16 round improvised mag. It even has the word improvised in it. <laughs> okay. Just, just implying that this gun was put together by like a child who just pressed some sheet metal together and made a gun. It's dog shit. With 16 rounds shooting at 1200 RPN, the, the gun is empty before you even know what happened, okay? You could sneeze and accidentally fire all the rounds in this gun and be out of ammo. It's so bad. But you can pull some meme guns, like, kills off. If you kill a kitted player with a looty, you could definitely feel good and be like, man, you're absolute garbage, man. You died to a looty. So it's got that going for it. You know, it's the BM gun, <laughs> if you will. But, you know, it's it's dog water, Chet. It's it's dog water. Um, it's going to go high F. High F. It's bison time, Chet. Uh, it's time to look at the bison. PP bison, the third worst damaging gun here on this list, coupled with one of the worst uh, RPMs 
for our fire rate as well, coming in at fifth place on the slowest. Uh, <laughs> Grandpa Bar's rolling right now. Yet he beat an alpha. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I was like, I was just waiting for him to say something about it. Look, you could beat someone with a looty. Like, I, I, I could, you know, with a looty, you can kill someone who has an AK alpha, you know? Does it mean it's better than an AK alpha? No. <laughs> but, you know, that's cool. Like, good job. Uh, but yeah, the third worst damaging gun on here, shooting 9 by 18, not even 9 by 19 rounds. Okay, so we have an even smaller caliber. Um, the fire rate, 674, well under 1,000. Uh, you can pop an AK side rail on this thing and put some put some optics on the front. It does shine a little bit and make up for it with its drum mag capacity that is just standard and right out of the gate. So you have a massive 64 round mag, uh, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. Like that's probably the best thing this gun has going for it is just the default massive uh, mag capacity. But you're not doing much in penetrating armor, um, so you're going to want to be shooting kneecaps. It's not that great of a gun on paper. Um, so, I think it kind of belongs... I think it belongs above the MP5 in C tier, okay? Just slightly above the MP5 in C here. <laughs> it is a little bit of a bitch to reload. So, uh, alright chat, what do we have next? Ooh, ooh, is that the AKM? Wait, what is this chat? This is the AK-74U. Which one is this one? And then which one's this one? This one's the AKM. What's this one? Are there three AKs in the game and I'm just now realizing it? Okay, if this is the AK-74, what's this one? There's a small version, AK-74SU. Wow, I had no way. I, <laughs> I'm oblivious to that. That's crazy. Okay, so both of these take the orange mags. This one jumps up to our big banana mags. Um, let's take the, the foldable stock one. We're moving on to rifles now. The most exciting and my favorite part. Uh, so let's get to our rifle list here. And we're going to sort by damage so we can see where things fall. Uh, here's the AK-74U, shooting 545 by 39 rounds, um, which is smaller than standard Stanag mags, like your M4, uh, your FAMAS, your M16, your AK-5C. Um, it's shooting slightly smaller rounds there. Um, it's doing 42.9 damage FMJ, slightly more um, with AP rounds, and a 624 rounds per minute probably on the lower end of these rifles that we're going to be looking at here so let's get let's 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 catch ourselves up on how effective 545 by 39 rounds actually do against um armored units uh we're going to want to know that okay so 545 by 39 it's always piercing through uh, tier one armor with FMJ, always, almost always piercing through tier two, piercing often against tier three, not piercing often uh, on tier four, and very rarely getting through tier six, but has the capabilities. If we look at the AP version, you can almost kind of bump all these numbers up by one, some of them by two, but AP does make quite a big difference on getting some of these higher end penetration values. Um, let's look at some of the other rifle um, ammo types and their penetration values so that we can get a good idea of where we're placing these rifles depending on what caliber they're shooting. So moving up on rifle caliber, slightly higher, the 556 five, by 45 rounds. This is going to be um, our standard Stanag builds, uh, our M4s, our M16s, etc. And uh, the 5.56 five, by 45, wait, am I wrong, chap? It is 5.56 five, five, by 45 for Stan Eggs. Yes? Okay, it is. Thank you, chap. Um, moi. So the 5.56 five, five, by 45, let's take a look at that armor penetration in comparison to the others. So even with FMJ, we're always piercing through tier one. We're piercing majority the majority of the time through tier two. Tier four... We're going to start seeing a similar drop-off, and actually the 
five four five by thirty nine and the five five six by forty five behave almost identical in armor penetration values. To quickly remind you, chat, ones. On this category mean you only have a 5 to 24 percent chance of penetrating that tier 6 armor in this case twos is 25 percent to 44 percent three 45 to 64 4 65 to 84 5 85 to 95 and six pretty much guaranteed at 96 to 100 percent so keep in mind those values while we're looking through here um, it looks like the AP rounds behave almost identical as well. So we have pretty much the same penetration values between these two round types. But if we move up to 762 by 39, which is going to be our AKM and AK Alpha um, caliber of rounds, then do we see some big differences, chat? We see... We're piercing through the same, the same, the same, the same, and the same. So if we look at uh, FMJ, it's behaving armor penetration value-wise the same as 5.56 and same as 5.45. Uh, what about AP? Does AP change things at all? Um, it looks like a hard no. So it's very interesting, chat, to note that if you... If you, let's say you're fighting someone who has an AK Alpha and a tier six rig, and you have an AK Alpha and a tier six rig, you're shooting both of each other with AP ammo in the chest, your chance of each round actually doing damage is 25 to 44% chance. So it's possible that you roll really shitty and your rounds just don't go through and get damage off and the other guy rolls really well a little bit of luck involved for penetration values and he gets the kill so keep in mind those weird times where you know you've shot center mass a lot and it's happened to me um quite a bit you might have just rolled really bad on your percent chance to penetrate so also just know how much fucking protection you're getting from tier 6 armor even from really good uh, guns like an AK Alpha. All right, chat? I don't think a lot of people know this and are thinking about this. So keep that in mind. That's actually really surprising to know because that I used to hold 762 rounds at much higher... Um, much, much higher regard because on paper, they sh I thought they would penetrate much better than 556, but they have the same exact armor penetration rounds. Um, last but not least, and then we'll start raiding once we go over all the ammo for the rifles, at least most of them. Last but not least, chat, we have our 762 by 51. 54? Chat, what is the uh, G3 shoot? It's it's 54, right? Or is it 51? 762 by 51 on, on the G3. And then the M1 SAS 762 by 51 as well. Okay. So it is the 51 version. Now let's look at the penetration values in comparison to the AK Alpha's rounds, okay? So look at this chat. 762 by 51 AP rounds. Sixes across the board until you get to tier five and even then it's a five. And then tier six, you're at a four. Whereas before, with AP rounds, even on an AK Alpha, you're only getting a two value, which is a really low percent chance to actually get through. It's 45% chance or lower to get through. Whereas this four value, uh, we're looking at between 65 and 84% chance that we get the pierce through. So just know when I speak so highly of the, uh, the G3, and the M1 SAS, and the reason I rate it so highly is because I can shred hugely kitted guns, okay? Huge, I can shred hugely kitted players. It just, you want, you yes, you have to be accurate with it. Yes, you don't have fully auto capabilities that work decently at mid to long range, but my God, if you can hit a shot or two, you you're you're getting through the armor in most cases it is a monster of a round do not get 
this underestimated. Do not underestimate this round type. All right, enough talking about rounds and penetrations. You guys need to have this in mind while we start placing these rifles in their tier lists and where they, where they stand, because that's going to be a huge game changer on where they land. So back to the AK-74U. Chat, where's it going, huh? Where are we gonna put this thing? Where, 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 chat, where would you put the AKS-74U, huh? It is fully auto, yeah, the, the G3. Hey, yo, la mal. <laughs> chat, chat's saying a lot of C tier. A lot of C tier here. Uh, and I think that's pretty valid. We're, we're, we're rating this, it's on the lower end of damage as far as most of the rifles go. It's definitely on the lower half. Um, you could put some optics on it uh, with an AK side rail, but you're not getting any foregrip help, so your fully auto capabilities really start dropping off on accuracy from mid to long range. Uh, rate of fire is pretty low. You know, it, it's, it's an okay rifle. Um, I'd probably put it high C. I'd probably put it high C above the Thompson. Uh, next up, we have, where is it chat? The AK-74 shooting our 545 by 38, surprisingly doing slightly more damage than the AKM, though not a terrible gun here. Uh, fire rate is about the same, uh, if not exactly the same as the AKM. And we saw that the penetration values across the AK, the 762 and the 545 by 39 were pretty much identical. So on paper, I'm very shocked and surprised to say that the AK-74 is slightly better than the AKM. Um, very, very surprised to say that. Now you don't get drum mag cap capabilities like the AKM, um, but that's that's pretty surprising. It's a, it's a good rifle. You can't put any foregrips on it, so you gotta consider that. Uh, and damage is pretty decent. I don't know. I think that has to go in low B tier then. I think it'll go above the PPSH, but below the umps. What do you think, chat? It's surprisingly good. It's surprisingly good. Uh, next up, we have the AK Alpha. Chat, where would you put the Alpha? I think everybody wants to put it in S tier. And I just have to shatter your guys' hopes and dreams. Now, don't get me wrong. The gun is fantastic. It's very cool. It's fucking sexy as hell. It's super rare, so it feels great to find one ever. But, uh, well, you know what? Look at the damage numbers. All right, you know, the damage numbers are great. They're much better than the standard AKM. So hold on, hold on, hold on. I might not shit on it as much as I would other guns. Um, it, it's rocking at, with base, basic FMG rounds. Uh, J, sorry. Um, it's in that two shit, two shit, god damn it, chat. It's in the two shot capability. At players have 100 health, two shot center mass that did 50 damage is an insta kill. Uh, if you're not getting any damage reduction from armor and things like that. So being able to two shot people with it is a very big deal. And the damage goes up significantly by 10 points if you're throwing AP rounds in there. Fire rate is gonna be pretty much the same as your other AK builds, um, but you get access to a lot more rails. You can really spice this gun up. You can really help control the recoil with foregrips. And uh, you can use this gun as a sniper rifle, as a fully auto close quarter combat gun, and a really good mid range rifle too. Honestly, the AK Alpha kind of does it all. Um, it is a good gun, chat. It is a very good d gun. and. I'm liking the damage numbers. I think we have our first A tier gun, if not S tier. Um, God, it's definitely better than the. I think we might have to rearrange this. Mm. We'll rearrange it later, but I definitely feel like it's way on par, if not better than the Deagle and way on par, if not better than the MP7. So it has to go high S tier for now. It has to. 
It's a it's a good gun, chat. It's a good gun. Maybe it'll go down to A. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, like I was talking about before, chat's talking about the recoil being like almost non-existent on the AK Alpha if you put a canted foregrip on it. Very true. Very, very true. Um, No, the MP7 is not better. So anything further on the left of the tier list chat is better than what's on the right of it in that same tier. Okay, we have the AS Val, I believe, next. Uh, let's go find that. Uh, AS Val, shooting 9 by 39 rounds. Um, it's doing 48, just slightly under 50 uh, for standard, and 51 uh, for AP. But this is one of the few rifles that you're going to see breaking 1,000 RPM, or even being at that level. Um, meaning its fire rate is just incredibly high. It's very fast at putting damage down range. Now the 9 by 39 millimeter rounds we have not looked at as far as their penetration values. So let's take a quick look. Um, it's doing okay at mid-grade armor. With AP, you're getting a pretty big drop off on penetration once you get past tier four armor. So penetration values are not great for it, um, which kind of makes me want to put it. I think it's a good B tier, maybe A tier gun. Chat, we got nothing in A tier. I think we need to move this. I'm gonna do this. I think this is appropriate. AS Val. It is fun. You can really reduce the recoil of it with a crazy fast fire rate with that foregrip on there. It's definitely an interesting gun. You just got to take into consideration the penetration values are not good for a rifle. Not good. So, I don't know. Let's put it right below the P90 for now. B tier. Okay, we got the AUG chat. We got the AUG chat. Where do we think the AUG is gonna sit on this list? You guys might know how I feel about the AUG already. Chat, how do you feel about the AUG, huh? <laughs> Tell me, when you, when you open a locker or a gun crate, especially in Vault, and you see an AUG, tell me how stoked you are. Oh my god, that guy pulled an AUG! Okay, like, are you are you tripping? <laughs> no, you're like, fuck, man. Why did I get an AUG in here? I could I've, I've, I could have wanted anything else other than this shit gun. Um, look, the damage is okay. The fire rate, it's it's your standard 556 five, by 45. Four, like, uh, look, it, it just... I just can't get over the the optic of the gun. I really can't get over the tiny ass dinky scope. I can't. So because of that, and it's dog shit to aim, and it's only really good point firing. Maybe I'm just bad at using the scope too, you know, but I don't know, man. I feel like there's better optics, and being stuck with that, I kinda this might be our first rifle that like goes into the D, D tier category. It might even go into F tier. I can't put it into F tier though, because you can point fire it if you find it naked. You can still get some kills with it, but my god, it's not it's not something I'm like building and taking out on raids. Yeah, it won't be worse than a pistol, that's for sure. Uh you are not wrong, chat. Uh, it looks like we got an arm here. Uh, let's save it. Let's get through the rifles. We got a shotgun bar. Let's do let's do our AK M next. Got the AK M. Take a quick look at the damage. Uh, our AK M uh, is on the mid grade for damage for rifles. Uh, as, as comparison to other rifles, penetration values are going to be the same as your 5.56. We've gone over that already. Um, same fire rate as all the other AKs. Uh, it's 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 a standard AK gun. Like it does good damage, but it's honestly not. It's not anything to like get super super excited about. It definitely works. I use it a lot, don't get me wrong, when I don't have anything better. I think it belongs... God, is the ump better than the AK? Would I take the ump over an AK? 
Or is the AK over the f the, the, the Threadripper, chat? What do you think? I think it's like high B. I think high B, right? Do you think it's better than the 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 flesh ripper? AK74 is better. Yeah, it is. On paper it is. Mmm. Does have a lot of recoil. Chat's saying C tier across the board. I mean, there's a few other votes, but it's interesting to think about this and compare it to others. I'd almost put it in, I think B tier, man. I don't know. Let's keep it in B tier for now. All right, chat. Uh, let me move our rifles up so we can go through all of those. SKS, we got this shit thing. Got this one, this one. Uh, what else we got? The bar, the bear at 50 cal, got some shotguns. Dragon off might be in a different category. The G36, we got the M4. Um, OPSKS, good, good, good. The stoner, the VSS, uh, SKS. What other rifles am I missing? We got some bolt actions here. Put our bolt actions together. Got our shotguns, shotgun, LMG. Bolt action, SV, the Dragon Off, and our AK-5C. Chat, let's talk about the AK-5C, because this one might surprise you. Where are we going to put the AK-5C? A lot of people are really excited to ever find this gun. It is a pretty gun. It's beefy. It looks big. It looks, looks bad. It looks nasty. But you might be surprised to find that if we sort by damage... It is the second worst damaging gun on this list, okay? It is the second most damaging gun, uh, least damaging gun on this list. At 41 damage, pretty slow fi uh, fire rate at 706. Um, it's shooting the 556 by 45 rounds. We know how that penetrates across the board. Um, I don't, I don't know, chat, like, on paper, the AK-5C, I think the only thing it has going for it is that because of the slower fire rate and the, uh, you can reduce the recoil quite a bit, so you can shoot it fully auto and still keep it controlled decently. I think that's the only thing it has going for it, if I'm being honest. Like, now, now let's, let me, let me do some side-by-side -side comparison. The M4 which is a very similar gun. It only has two extra damage on the full metal jacket rounds and three extra damage on the AP, AP rounds. Other than that, the penetration is exactly the same. So on paper, the M4 is better. It's got faster fire rate, but if you like the benefit of a slower fire rate rifle and fully autoing at longer range, then the AK-5C is a great gun to take out for it. Um, Hmm. God, this is hard, chat, the further in we get on this list. I think I put the AK-5C in high B tier. We might have to move some of these up into A tier. I'm really afraid to put things into A tier. And S tier for sure. Chat, knowing all of that, where would you actually put the AK-5C? Because like I said before, I know that it's very highly rated. You think B is deserved? All right, let's keep it at high B then. So, next chat, we have our Galil. So, the Galil's kind of an interesting gun. This one might surprise you. Let's just compare damage numbers. Shooting the same round as the AK-5C we just talked about, but for whatever reason, it's doing five extra base damage per shot on FMJ. And um, if we look at the AP, it breaks the 50 damage mark on AP rounds, which means it's two shotting people if the rounds actually get through and pierce armor. So that's very interesting. There's a massive damage boost here. Even comparing the M4's damage, um, which arguably is chosen over the Galil over and over again, 
Um, it's pretty interesting how much higher the damage is here. We know the capabilities of armor pen, we went through that before. Much slower rate of fire, which means we should be able to control the recoil much more. And I think it makes up for that lower rate of fire with the damage. Maybe the Galil is super slept on, and um, I've seen some of you guys figuring out how strong Galils actually are. Um, and the fact that it breaks the 50 damage mark on AP rounds is a big deal. Two-shotting to the chest is nothing to, to scoff at when you start getting into guns that are capable of that. So... Now, the one shit thing that it has going for it is the fact that the only top rail you have is super far forward on the gun, but it's, a, it's an adjustment. You can get used to it. But definitely having the optics closer to your eye helps a lot with ease of aiming and ease of um, uh, getting your target in sights. So you'll have to deal with that little bit of quirk when you're dealing with Galil. I think let's 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 go a little bit nuts. I, I think Galil is gonna have to go in A tier, which might shock people. Um, all right, let's talk about this shitty L L eight five A two. Um, Decent damage, pretty mid-grade, uh, pretty fast fire rate, but dude, the damn, the damn rail on the top, the handle on the top of the gun, the fact that I can't take that off and remove it, chat, what am I gonna do with it, man? What am I gonna do with it? Sure, you can point fire and it'll do well, but like, my God, who puts a handle on the top of a goddamn rifle? It makes zero sense at all. Uh, so because of that, uh, F tier. Uh, moving on, we have uh, the, uh, let's do the M16. I'm gonna do these lower end rifles before we get into the crazy one. Chat's like, how could you, F tier? Dude, I don't know. Uh, okay, look, realistically and not memeing, I'd put this gun, I'd probably put it above the MP5. Okay, C tier actually but man the gun makes me mad it makes me very mad all right m16 is next let's take a look uh m16 is another weird one as well uh that's breaking that 50 damage per shot if you throw some ap rounds in there fire rate is surprisingly high too uh, at a thousand rpm compare that to the m4 which is just shy of that 949 um no You can, it's another one of those handle guns though. You can use it to point fire and be okay. The damage is okay, but I don't know. The fact that there's a fucking handle over the top of the gun, like chat, just kill me, man. Like, I don't want to use it. Uh, I think it goes right alongside that other gun. It's like, give me, it is hated. And it does do good damage. And it, like, it's a good rifle, but the fact that there's a fucking handle over the top of it. I can't, man. I can't. You can't even put optics on it. So until you can take the M16 apart, put a better chassis on there, or or, or something that's gonna let me put a canted sight on it, that I actually can use this gun at range with some sort of capacity, I, I just can't rate it highly. I, I can't rate it highly. Uh, we have the FAMAS next. All right, FAMAS 556 by 45 again. We're going to see this round over and over in the rifle section. Uh, it's on the lower end of damage. Um, still kind of mid-tier, mid-grade. Uh, it's doing about the same as an M4 if you want to use that as comparison. Fire rate's pretty similar to the other M4 builds. But we have another handle, okay? You can point fire this. You're naked. You find it in a, a locker and you've got nothing else. Great. You can... You can get some kills maybe at range, but more than likely you're just point firing this close range and hoping to find a better rifle along the way. Um, I think it goes right with all the other handled guns. Um, so we're going to put it there and see. Uh, chat, this list is getting big. It's getting big. We have a scar now. So the scar, what do we do with the scar, chat? The Scar is also a lower end damaging gun with probably the lowest fire rate that we're going to see on this list here. Um, 
at least one of the lowest, uh, with the Galil being slightly lower. Now, this comes with the same benefits I talked about before, with a slower fire rate and a foregrip thrown on there. You can, I know I'm full, uh, full screen, I'm just now realizing this, but um, <laughs> you, you can uh, incredibly control the recoil fully auto and laser beam people, even at long range fights, so. That's where I think the scar really shines. Um, so if you're into fully autoing at long ranges and like that capability, uh, the scar is going to do it for you. Um, it, it's a good gun. But at close range, the scar is really going to drop off in power if we're looking at just raw, raw numbers and damage. So knowing that, I think the scar is a great pick. Um, I'd probably put it... I'm gonna put it right below the AKs. Okay? It's gonna go right below the AKs. Um, still a great gun. High B. Up next, chat. The G36. Uh, which, where does that belong? You might be surprised to see that the G36K is the worst rifle um if we're just looking at damage numbers shooting 556 five, by 45 that's similar round that we're seeing everybody everywhere else uh 706 rpm it's mid-grade it's on par with the ak5c it's a little bit slower um look there's a lot of other stanag uh uh gun builds that you can that you can use that are just going to outperform the g36 I think the only thing the G36 has going for it is that it's just cool as shit to look at. It's a cool looking gun, but I, 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 it's just, it's just, it's, it's cool, man. It's flashy. It looks great, but there's just better Stanek guns to bring in instead. Um, I don't, I don't think it's, it, I, I think it, I think it goes, hmm. I think it goes like high C, high C category. Look, it's flashy. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I know Timeless made a vid on how good it is, and it look any any gun in good hands is god tier. Like you can you can make any gun look good. Timeless is a monster. He's so good at the game. Um, that's why I love doing with him because we're both monsters when we play together. But. Um, it's 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 not a dog shit gun by any means you can kit it out but there are just better options chat if you're looking at rifle builds we're looking at the numbers we're seeing the damage on paper there's better stanag builds and guns to pick um next up is going to be the uh m4 let's look at the m4 here chat uh, M4 is going to be right in the middle damage wise. Really nice high rate of fire, uh, almost breaking that thousand rounds per minute. Um, we know the damage pen or the armor penetration of this 556. Um, it's a great gun. It's a good. I would say the M4 is a good jack of all trades. It can handle itself close range with its fast fire rate to make up for it. Um, so you can really get DPS out quickly, close range. Um, at medium range, you can actually handle the recoil decently with a good foregrip, or just single fire it and use it as a marksman rifle. You can snipe people with it as well. It's it's a really good all rounder, but it's not super good at one thing over the other. So to cover all of your bases pretty well, an M4 is kind of a great pick no matter what you're doing. Uh, so knowing that, I think it goes in the A tier, another rare A tier gun category. Um, I, I think I like the M4 better than the AK-5C, which might seem weird. Um, it, it's quite good, quite good. The Galil on paper might be a little better. It just doesn't have the all-rounder capabilities. I don't know, they're close. We might rearrange this as we go. Um, but definitely going in A tier. Uh, next, the Tapco, the OPSKS. Um, which, let's find it here. Uh, it's on the higher end of, of damage on this rifle list. I personally love the Tapco SKS. I love the base SKS. Um, 
Because it's shooting these, which I don't know if we looked at, chat. Chat, did we look at the 762 by 39? Um, 762 by 39 damage penetration. Uh, if we compare them quickly to 556 by 45, are they exactly the same? They are exactly the same. Uh, okay, so the armor penetration values for the SKS and uh, Stanag builds are exactly the same. But yeah, I'm just a huge fan of the gun. I have been uh, for a long time. I love how much the Tapco OP SKS allows for uh, attachments. It is a great marksman rifle, has great damage, um, even with base FMJ rounds, it's pushing 49 damage, getting very close to that two-shot kill. And if you throw AP rounds in there, you are two-shotting anyone to the chest if your bullet penetrates armor. Um, so having that two-shot capability against mid-grade and lower armor is a big deal. Um, so if you're accurate with your shots, um, you can do an insane amount of damage and really shine. You can even use this gun up close if you can pull the trigger quick enough with a drum mag. Uh, you can pop that SKS drum mag and really not have to worry while you're sniping or killing people with that giant mag capacity. I love the gun. I think it's great. It's got attachment slots. Um, God, I put it in A tier. I'm putting it in A tier. Above the M4 and the Galil. Let's throw it there. I think it belongs there, chat. What about the Golden SKS? I don't even think I need to talk about this, but it's going into S tier. Um, we'll look at the damage numbers regardless. Uh, we have 49 damage. It's the exact sa same damage as the Tapco SKS, chat. Um, exact same damage. Boasting just shy of 1,000 RPM. Uh, for how many rounds it's shooting per minute. An insane number for a rifle. Um, we have that bottom foregrip. You need to put an angled foregrip on this gun for it to really shine. You need to. Um, it makes the recoil a lot more controllable. You're not going to get front sights on it. But honestly, the irons are pretty good on the SKS in my opinion. Tan, please move M4 to S tier. It is an all-round amazing gun and cheap. It is a very good gun and cheap. We'll see how it goes as we continue to flesh this out, Zix. Um, see how it goes. You guys know how I feel about this gun. The damage is insane, okay? The damage is insane on this thing. It absolutely shreds close range. Um, and while I don't recommend it for medium to long range encounters, so maps like the island and even Matka Miest is kind of pushing it, it really shines on Missile Silo. Um, it's, it, 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 I think it's, it's the highest, on paper, it's the highest damaging gun in the game. It is. The rate of fire, the damage per round, Decent armor pen values on par with AK Alpha. Uh, it's insane, and it shoots faster than the AK Alpha. I think it's better. If you can really learn how to point fire it, the gun is S tier. It, it, it's really good. It's super fucking good. I'm keeping it in S tier, above the AK Alpha. Wanna do a headphone dent check? There you go. Headphone dent check. There you go, chat. You see? Good. Definitely, uh, you know, with hair as massive as this, it's, 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 I, yeah, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna push, uh, <laughs> are you talking about, like, a headphone dent in my actual skull, not just my hair? Chad, is that real? I've seen, like, Tyler 1 and shit, like, and they, like, actually have these weird dents in their head there. Maybe that's just how the head is shaped. I don't know. I don't think I really have it, chat. Anyways, um, we got the G3, chat. Let's take a look at the G3A1. Now, this might surprise you. I have this sorted. Look at what the most damaging gun is on this list. Is this incredible, chat? The most damaging rifle in the game is the G3A1. There is a reason that I talk this gun up so much 
always get excited when I find mags for it. Um, it is an incredible cheap rifle that you can get access to at Spectre level 3. It is a god tier gun. Okay? Not only is it the highest damaging gun in the game, with even FMJ rounds doing 74 damage when a player only has 100 health. AP rounds will push you up to 80.8 .8 damage. Um, it can fully auto. I don't recommend it unless you're in super, super tight close quarter combat. Then you can just rip somebody to pieces. Um, you should be using this like a marksman rifle. You can snipe with it. You can medium range with it. And you can close range with it well as well. Um, the 7.62 by 51 rounds are going to penetrate like I just everything. Gun in the raid I just did with the Big Mac. Instantly it... thought of you. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> you should get a streamer charm for it. Would be cool. I do love the gun a lot. Um, chat, let's take a look. The 762 by 51. We are piercing. We have some of the best armor penetration out of any other rifle round, okay? Other than sniper rifle rounds, like bolt actions. We guaranteed pretty much um breaking through tier one two three four tier five armor very very likely to break through and just sometimes you'll get a block on tier six armor but look at this in comparison to see a four on tier six armor my cat bro can i can i show i wish i could show you he's just laying on my mouse so i can't move it much um, look at all these red numbers for most of the uh, round types, most of the ammo types, and what breaks tier 6 armor rigs. And you'll, you'll see zeros mainly, a few ones, a few twos, and it's really rare to see fours and sixes, okay? You're only seeing sixes and fours on really high end, uh, like bolt actions and things like that. Um, but here's a gun, a G3 that has a four uh, for piercing through tier six armor. It is a fantastic gun. It's gonna shred through players regardless of what they're wearing. I cannot recommend it enough. It goes S tier, for sure, S tier. All right, chat, we're getting close to being done with this tier list, very close. But yes, once again, the G3, use it. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. Single fire it, make sure you take a breath, Make sure your shot actually lands before you fire because the kick is great on this gun. You have to wait a decent amount of times in between shots to reacquire your target. But my god, if you can hit one to two of those shots, you almost guarantee a kill. You can almost guarantee a kill in one to two shots. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic gun. Uh, use it. Next up is my other hugely favorite gun. Um, it's going to be the M1 SAS. Mm, big. Mm, mm. It's going to be the second most damaging gun uh, on this list. Uh, very good at 69. We're two-shotting with FMJ rounds. Um, we are two-shotting with AP rounds at 74.5 damage. We have the same penetration because we're shooting that 7.62 by 51 round as the G3. But uh, while we do see a tiny drop in damage, um, we're still in the two-shot category uh, across the board. So consider that. Uh, and we get access to rails on this gun. We only have one top rail on the G3 to put an optic on there. But on the SAS, we can put foregrips, we can put lasers, we can put flashlights, we can put whatever we want on this thing to help reduce the recoil, which means you can shoot it at a faster fire rate technically um, and still reacquire your target because you're controlling that recoil a lot better with those attachments. Um, fantastic gun. It's the rich man's G3. Um, the G3 is the poor man's ass they're both fucking fantastic guns that will shred even the most kitted chads out there uh s tier 100 percent chat 100 percent. all right where's this weird ass looking as silly ass gun the sg552 chat press one if you use this gun on a regular basis yeah i don't think this gun gets used very often uh damage numbers are on par with the scar little bit on the faster rate of fire side we're not breaking that two shot damage um it's another 556 five, by 45 there's so many stanag built rifles i just think there's better versions um 
you can't put a foregrip on it. Uh, if I recall correctly, it's just a top optic. I just think there's better options uh, for for a Stanag rifle. Um, I think it kind of goes with the G36. It's probably around the same as that. What do you think, chap? All right, we got the stoner. The stoner is very weird. Hi, Odin. Not gonna lie, I thought the tier list would be a bit quicker. Lamal, I know. <laughs> look, tier lists are hella, at least the way I like to do them, they're very in depth. We look at all the numbers, we talk about the gun for a while, what it's good for, what it's not. Then we do some rearranging, we talk about ammo types. There's a lot to go into um, placing guns on a tier list with some accuracy. Like, I, I care about this. Like, I, I wanna, I, I'm looking at all the numbers. We're looking at all the research. We're looking, like, we, I, I could just be like, fuck, here's my opinion, and then just, just like throw them in real quick. But I like this breakdown, and I think a lot of you guys uh, would be surprised or have been surprised at some of these numbers and, and math shit that I've showed you about the guns and penetration values. You might look at guns in a whole new light that you've never seen before, rather than me just like haphazardly throwing shit around. Um, uh, but yeah, I love some yap chat. I love me some yap. What were we looking at? We're looking at the stoner. This is a weird gun. This is a very, very weird gun. Uh... Like, it's just, most people look at the stoner and all they're, all they want out of the stoner is the mag, <laughs> right? They're not going to touch the gun at all otherwise. But you might be surprised to find the stoner is just shy of the same firepower as uh, the AK Alpha. If not exactly the same because the stoner shoots a little bit faster. But where the stoner goes wrong is a really awkward... Uh, uh, optic, um, the the iron sights are really rough. You cannot, to my knowledge, put anything on this gun. Chat, there's no rails on this gun, right? There's no rails. All right, chat seems to be mixed on this. Honestly, regardless if you can put a foregrip on the bottom of it or not, without optics, it kind of gets into that rough, weird category where like maybe you could use it on missile silo to shred through people. Um, it's shooting 556 by 45, like I said, another Stanag build. And out of all the Stanag builds, it is the highest damaging one. So take that for what you will. Um, if you can point fire this gun, it can do decent. But I just find it kind of annoying that I can't kit this gun up and put a bunch of attachments on it. So for that reason, uh, low B. Low B, I think is where it's gonna put. And people are going back and forth thinking like, yeah, you can put attachment on it. No, you can't. Go check right now. Hamter, I, I'm, I'm gonna be looking out for your name specifically, okay? I'm gonna be looking for your name. Go get in game, go verify it and tell me. Yeah, the drum mag is like all we care about with the stoner. We pull that out and we put it in a better uh, M4 build. Like I said, the damage is pretty nice, though. So didn't we already do the uh, this gun? Or did we not? I thought we already did the AS Val. Maybe we didn't. Oh, it was the VSS. Sorry, we need to do. All right, chat, let's do the VSS. So, uh, VSS uh, is the mid to higher end of damage per second uh, out of our rifles. Fire rate is one of those rare rifles that boasts a thousand rounds per minute. So it can really dump mags down range. Now combine this with like a standard 20 round mag that comes with the VSS. It's gonna be pretty rough. You're gonna go through that instantly. So I really recommend if you are rocking this gun or the AS Val, bring those 40 round mags in. They make a big difference because this gun is shooting fast. It's shooting very fast and you will run out of ammo before you realize it. Um, it's in that two shot capability where it can actually two shot people with uh, AP rounds because we're over that 50 damage mark. Uh, very nice, very good. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's pretty good. The the big, the big downside of the AS Val and the VSS is going to be the fact that it's shooting nine by thirty nine, and the penetrations, which I can remind you on it, are not very good. 
Um, now they're good mid grade, but once you start getting into the tier five or tier six armor rigs, your chances of penetration go from five to 24% uh, on a one. A five to 24% chance for your bolt to go through is pretty rough on the higher end armor. So just be aware of that. If you're seeing someone kitted with high end armor, go for the kneecap and you could probably kill them pretty quick. Um, I think it kind of goes with the VSS. Where's the VSS at chat? I think this belongs there with it. Better than the VSS because we get, uh, or sorry, uh, the AS valve is a little bit better because it has extra attachments. Uh, we can get some foregrips on there. Um, while the VSS, you can put an AK side rail on it and get optics and that's that's pretty much it. Oh, I think it belongs there. It's a good gun. It's definitely a good gun. Good damage. It's just the armor penetration makes it a little bit rough. All right, up next, standard SKS. Uh, we know this gun. Uh, we're pretty familiar with how it performs. Um, we can't put any attachments on this. It's a base gun, but my God, it is, is it the best starter rifle in my opinion? Um, it's, it's such a good base level one rifle. If you've got nothing else and nothing better, bring in an SKS. Uh, and if you can learn those iron sights, you won't be disappointed. It is two shotting people to the chest with AP. It's basically two shotting with FMJ. You probably need a third round in there though. Cause we're just shy of 50. Uh, damage um, and it's shooting pretty damn good rounds here the same as our AK alpha we're shooting out of our SKS um, I love the gun I think it's great mm, but how does it stand up against the others I think we put it right below the VSS it's really good high B mid mid B mid B for that really good Really good rifle. All right, Chad, I think we're on to uh, bolt actions, if I'm not wrong. I think it's time for bolt actions. We're done with the rifle category. Okay, we got some, we got some bolt actions and sniper rifles. Uh, let's go to the arm. Start out with the arm. All right, let's sort the arm, uh, the rifles, bolt action rifles by damage. So we can get a good idea of where this is landing. Chat, you might be surprised and might not know this. The arm, um, even at FMJ rounds, are a guaranteed one shot if the bullet hits center mass, okay? And, and it breaks through armor. It's a guaranteed one shot. That is huge. With AP, even more so. Now, we do need to take a look at these rounds and how they're holding up to uh, armor. So the 338, even with FMJ chat, we're getting pretty much 100%. Six is pretty much guaranteed of a breakthrough with like a 4% margin of error. So we're getting sixes across the board up until tier five. Then we drop to a five, which is still really high chance. And then for six, uh, tier six armors, we drop down to a four, which is still quite good. At four, we have a 65 to 84% of actually penetrating the armor. But the easily solvable, especially cheap because you're not firing a fuck ton of rounds, throw AP rounds in there, okay? If you're rocking an arm, you have no excuse not to throw AP rounds in there because now when you run into those kitted tier six, tier five armor users, you're pretty much getting a guaranteed penetration through any armor. You will one shot anybody if you hit them in the chest with AP rounds. That is a big deal, chat. That is a big deal. So if you're good at aiming, you're good at shooting, and you like sniping, I think the arm has to go into S tier. I think it has to. It's a one-shot gun. The big downside of it is you have to work the bolt in between shots. You have to work the bolt in between shots, which is gonna make you slower, but the fact that it's gonna one-shot I think it goes there. I need to use the arm more, more often, chat. Knowing the damage that it pulls, I definitely want to use the arm more often. 
What's the fire rate? <laughs> it's just as fast as you can work the bolt. That's what the fire rate is. <laughs> That's a funny question though. All right, uh, chat on to, chat, what is this? Can someone tell me what this is? Who can tell? What is this? Is it this one? The 1903 Springfield? Yep, it's the Springfield. Okay, so the Springfield's shooting 30-06. Um, we have two shot capabilities on FMJ, um, which is kind of rough if you have to two shot somebody with a bolt action, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, unless you have some range and can duck into cover in between shots, this is probably going to get you killed. Uh, you can't put any optics on this bad boy. Uh, it's kind of rough, but you know, if you like bolt actions and you want to just be a Giga Chad that's just a god working a bolt, um, you can do some good damage. Now, how does 30 6 hold up as far as penetration values go? Nowhere near, it's still decent, but once you get past tier three armor and you start getting into the four, five, six, uh, the drop off drops off considerably. You put AP in, you can delay the drop off for a little bit, um, but you're gonna start struggling to pierce through tier six. And when you have to work a bolt, you want every, every, every round counting. Um, God, I don't know if I'd take this in. Chat, can I put it in D tier? Can I put it in D tier? What do you guys think? I think the slow fire rate and the fact that it, it's two shotting, it, it's just not good enough. There's rifles that two shot. Um, okay, good. I think I think we all agree there. Oh, we're getting close to the end. We have the dragon off next. Um, which let's take a peek here. Uh, it is in the sniper rifle category. Uh, Dragon off uh, because it's a semi-auto. Well, so is the Barrett. Uh, it looks like we're only pulling 76 damage, so we're two shotting to the chest. Even with AP rounds, we are still only two shotting. The 762 by 54 MMR is going to have a little bit better armor penetration, except they don't actually show it. Uh, okay, here it is. Um, so if you're rocking the dragon off and you like the gun, definitely put AP rounds in it so you can get these higher chances of piercing through tier five and tier six armor, because you're gonna notice a bit of a hit when you start getting into heavily armored units, as you can see here with FMJ rounds. Uh, it's it's a fun, good semi-auto sniper rifle. Um, damage I wish was a little bit better, but it makes sense. You can two shot most everybody with it, especially with AP. Um, it's it's not bad. It's pretty good. I'll put it in. Um, God, where does it fit, chat? I feel like it's like I want to put it just below the the boss ump. I think that's pretty fair. Put it in B tier. Now we have this weird little uh, Mosin Nagant. Um, damage is pretty rough here. Look, I mean, it's good at 81 and 86, but having to land two bolt action sh shots when time to kill is so low. Uh, if you're not like a ninja running around in the bushes and are like not being spotted, um, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble if you're not killing people quickly with this gun. Uh, having to work that bolt makes things pretty rough here with the Mosin. Um, you all are also just, tied to iron sights uh so have fun with it it's just it's 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 a rough gun if you're really talented and can pull off two quick shots with it then power to you but i think in most people in his hands this gun is pretty rough it's going in low d tier we have the barrett 50 cal um now i think it's it's pretty apparent where this gun's going look at these base damage numbers Players only have 100 health, and this thing's doing 215 damage, which means that you can shoot them even in the appendages, the outer arms, where you get a percent drop off, um, and you do less damage to limbs. You're still one-shotting, even if you're shooting people in like the arms and stuff, in most cases. Uh, 264 damage with AP rounds. We already know, chat. We don't even have to look at it. 
the 50 BMG, even with full uh, uh, FMJ rounds, you don't even need AP in here. Um, it's 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 piercing across the board, every single armor type. Uh, it's a monster of a gun. It will fold people in half. Uh, it's definitely high S tier. Very rare to find and get your hands on. You can't even craft ammo for it. Um, but man, if you can get a few rounds, the thing is insane. It's insane. Uh, next, we have another bolt action rifle. It's going to be this bad boy here. Uh, the Seiko Hunter. Now, this one's interesting, chat. This one, if you do bring AP ammo, you can. You're doing enough damage to actually one shot if you're center massing and you're getting penetration. Okay? So, as much as it's a shitty rifle, you do have one shot capabilities if you throw AP ammo into it. So, you can do some kind of fun, tricky shit uh, with this gun. Uh, and then the AP is going to pierce through almost everything. It's going to start getting a lower chance of pierce through on tier 6 armor. But other than that, it's pretty much going to hit across the board. Which is pretty interesting. So Seiko Hunter actually kind of goaded. It's a little bit of a sleeper gun. if you, Especially if you're putting uh, AP ammo in it. Um, I think because of how surprising its damage numbers are... But the low rate of fire with working a bolt with no optics and only iron sights. I think it's a fun little meme gun. It belongs to go like in the B category right alongside the Mac 10. Good chat. Pretty good. Uh, Wakasashi. Do they even have this? Okay, this is a sword. I know you can't really tell. Do they have sword damage on here? They have the golden spoon. How much does this golden spoon do? 50 to 60 damage. All the knives do 50 to 60 damage. Where's the sword? I don't know if they have the sword on here. I don't think they do. It's probably, we could probably say it's about 50 to 60 damage if all the other melees are in the same category. Um, you wouldn't think I'd be putting a sword on a tier list, but I'm telling you chat, at least with the current system of how the melee works, the melee system is pretty fucking bad. If I'm just being blunt and honest with you guys, for a VR game, the melee system is pretty dog shit. Um, now, luckily, this game doesn't rely heavily on melee mechanics, so it's easily uh, goes under the radar. It doesn't really affect our gameplay much. But if you take a Wakasashi, this sword here, and you just do this, just we want it. Just wave it as fast as you can in front of you and have it hit their head. It, people will just fall over. You you can insta kill people with it. Um, got a little extra reach, so it has that going for it. But chat, it's I mean it's a sword. What do you want from me? Uh, you shouldn't be able to we want it and insta kill people with it. I'll tell you that much. Um, but that's how it works in game right now. So that's how I'm gonna rate it. Uh, Wakasashi, I don't know. Wish it could deflect bullets. It would be sick if it could deflect bullets. Could you imagine? When you have people who just practice like getting hella good at just like um at just being a Jedi in Tabor. Like, holy shit, there's a Jedi in here. He's blocking bullets, he's killing people with swords. Um, I don't even know where to put this, to be honest. Or it's not really effective. Because you're having guns. That you bring a knife to a gunfight, you're gonna get shot and killed more than likely. It's going in F tier. What can I say? Mm. All right, we have shotguns and then LMG, and we're done. We're almost there, chat. Yes, I'm eating a Kit Kat. Nom nom nom. Okay, so let's start off with the Saiga. Now, the Saiga chat. Take a look at this. If you hit all of your pellets with Buckshot, the Saiga is doing 160 damage. It's doing 20 damage per pellet, so all you need is 5 pellets to hit on Flesh, and it's an insta-kill with a single shot chat. Now, not only is it doing this much damage, but you can put a drum mag on the Saiga, and you can it'll shoot as fast as you pull the trigger. So. The fact that you only need five pellets doing hitting flesh to get a kill, if you just pull that trigger 
a few times super fast, it's deleting anybody in front of you. Now keep in mind, your penetration values are pretty much non-existent um, for buckshot or any sort of pellets coming out of a shotgun. Shoot them in the knees, chat. Shoot them in the knees, they will drop so quick. Now you can go for headshots. It takes one pellet to hit the face for insta-kill. But any sort of basic helmets with face shields will block most buckshot. So if you want to kind of go for guaranteed kills, um, you can just shoot them in the legs. They will fall over so fast and you will get kills you didn't think were possible in close quarters with the Saiga. It's insane damage. If we look at it shooting slugs, bruh, it's doing 192 damage with slugs. Now... Also, keep in mind, the penetration value of the slugs in this game are not very good, but it's one-shotting people. So that's why, like, if people are armored and you just shoot them in the arm or the leg one time with a slug, they're falling over. They're dead. And the Saiga, you can throw an AK side rail on it. You can put any optic you want on it. The Saiga is a sleeper. It is a disgusting, powerful gun that you can... Depending on what ammo you load into it, you can use as a very powerful sniper rifle on par with Barrett 50 cal damage, minus the armor penetration, uh, and throw buckshot in it and turn it into an absolute shredding close quarter combat machine. It is very, very strong. If I'm mistaken, aren't these damage numbers made from like point blank range? Yeah, so they don't take into consideration drop-off damage over time, but all of that, if you want to dive into it, is on here, the bullet drop uh, over time. Uh, but regardless, 192 damage, even if you had a 50% damage drop-off over like a 200 meter range, it's still doing almost 100 damage to one-shot people at the, at those kind of distances. Um, so yeah, take a look at the, the drop-off range if you really want to hone in how far you can one-shot people with a slug. Um, but it is massive. It is massive. It is a great gun. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it does 192 damage. Uh, keep in mind, Birdshot's going to do considerably less than 139, but that's still insane numbers. 100 damage is enough to kill a player. Uh, I love the Saiga. I think it's a fucking insane, insane gun. <sighs> Dude, I, I think I put it in A tier. It's going in A tier. It's such a good gun. Uh, next, we have... Which one is this, chap? We have the JW Benelli. Another great gun, but we can look across the board, chat. All of these shotguns are doing exactly the same damage. So we can be pretty quick about this. Uh, what's going to change are what attachments we have, mag capacity, um, and that's really it. Uh, so no drum mags on these. So the Saiga inherently is going to be better, uh, in my opinion. And the 590A1 isn't even in the game anymore. That's the pump shotgun. So we really just have these two shotguns to look at. The Benelli is still fantastic. Um... They're, they're very similar. They're they're very similar. But I like that you ca you can't put optics on the Benelli, right? There's no top rail chat. And, uh, the Saiga is better than an on paper, in my opinion. Same damage. The Benelli is a gorgeous gun, though. Don't get me wrong. Um, but definitely the Saiga outperforms it because we can put an optic on there with the AK side rail. And we can we can put a drum mag in there, a Saiga drum, and get access to 20 rounds before we have to reload. A big deal in comparison to ro loading shell by shell individually into it and carrying an extra pocket. Still a fantastic gun. Uh, I think it belongs... I think it belongs above, above the PPSH. Um, really, really, really good gun. All right, our last gun... We're going to just throw this in F tier, uh, the shotgun, because it doesn't exist in the game anymore. Um, is going to be the bar. Now, the bar is a very weird gun. Uh, it's shooting 30 out 6, which, you know, it's it, it, it can get through mid grade armor and then starts dropping off a decent amount on higher end armor. Um, 
It kicks like a monster. You can't put any optics on it. It is doing 67 damage with FMJ rounds, 70 with AP, which means it is in the category of guns that can two shot to the chest. Um, eh, there's better guns out there that two shot to the chest. Uh, I think it goes, uh, it's not as bad as people might think though. The mag capacity is a bit rough with a smaller mag size, but it doesn't shoot terribly fast. So you can kind of keep up with it. Um, I don't know if you grab it and point fire someone, it's like, it's like low C high D. What do you guys think chat? Wait, you're saying the bar has a side rail? What has a side rail, chat? The Benelli? The Benelli? Okay, so you can put optics on there, I guess, if you want, and turn it sideways. It's I mean, The laser sight's great, but I still think the Saiga oh, like, way overshadows it because you can put an actual optic on the top. Um, It's still a good, good gun, though. What do you guys think? You think this placement's fine? Low C, high D? Yeah, the bar is not as bad as people think. All right, chat, here it is. Here's our tier list. Let's take a quick look at each of the tiers and see how they rank. Uh, our S tier is gonna be the Barrett 50 Cal, the Golden SKS, an M1 SAS, the G3, uh, the AK Alpha, the Om, all excellent, insane guns that if you happen to find in raid or have access to purchase, you should be using them often. They are very powerful. Deagle, uh, it's got really high damage. It is very underrated still. Um, it did get a nerf, but I think it's still very much capable and a cheap handgun to get your 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 hands on to. So if you are gonna rock a handgun, it's pretty fantastic. Um, also in A tier, we have our MP7, uh, nice with the drum mags, the OP SKS, the M4, the Galil surprisingly, go back and watch the Galil part if you're wondering why this is an A tier, uh, and the Saiga. B tier is pretty massive, our AK-5C, lots of our other rifles, we've got boss guns, we've got Mac 11s etc. Our C tier is all pretty mid, like low end rifles or decent mid grade SMGs, um, the STX, uh, the 9mm Vector, um, you know, we've got our shitty rifles with handles. Um, D tier is pretty much all pistols and garbage SMGs. That stupid Galil crying face. No, no, go back and watch the Galil part. Maybe you were here for it. You saw the damage. The Galil is surprisingly stronger than you might think. Um, it's actually kind of crazy. Now, what else here? And our F tier, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, very self-explanatory. Chat, we made it. We did it. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Did your gun make it to a decent spot on the tier list? Or did you get your dream shattered when I went over your favorite gun's damage numbers and penetration values and went, <gasps> I didn't know it was so bad. And, and hopefully on the opposite end, you found some guns that you didn't realize were so powerful. Use this knowledge, use this information. I did a heavy breakdown for you. This is the longest yap session ever. We've been yapping for almost three hours. Do you guys want to go raid? You want to get some raids in? Those of you who made it to the end of the video, I see you. I appreciate you. Double check that you're subscribed as it helps a ton. Give a like if you feel the video deserved it. And I read all of your comments. So let me know what you think below. If you want to be a part of chat, come check out the live streams. I stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, always at 3.30 p.m. PST for start time. I'd love to see you there. And until next time.